Well, good day, viewers. Today I have a 2015 GMC truck here that I just finished fixing the fuel trim problems on. And I wanted to experiment with the injector balance test function using GM's GDS and uh, GM's interface. Um, I've had multiple vehicles, in fact, one a few weeks ago where I changed eight injectors and uh, cleaned the intake ports because of a fuel trim imbalance code and that fixed it but I wasn't pleased with the injector flow test results so I'm going to use this software to do the test I'm using I said GM software now this truck hasn't got a problem so we're going to go into module diagnostics and the engine control module and into control functions I believe and fuel system and injector balance test so I don't see an automated test procedure here so you, the test is going to be in kilopascals what it's going to do and the truck is running unlike previous injector balance tests where you would watch injector fuel pressure drop this one is done running so when I kill cylinder one or activate cylinder one injector you'll see it up here the engine drops and it shows 191 injector 2 229 230 injector 3 193 injector 4 270 injector 5 211 injector 6 298 280 injector 7 198 and injector 8 267 so if you notice here every second one is lower so the injectors on bank 1 which is 1 3 5 and 7 all dropped lower let's try this one again number 5 That one's a little higher, 196 that time. And injectors on bank two, which is two, four, six, and eight, are all higher. Now, the way GM tells you to interpret the test results here is to add them all together, unless you have one injector that is really bad and it's causing a misfire, then you dis discount that one. But if, in this case, we don't have any problems, so we have eight injector flows. Add them all, divide by eight, that gives you the average injector drop and then the difference between the lowest and the average or the highest and the average shouldn't be greater than 20 percent uh, these are the same basic test results i got on two other vehicles that i've run this test on it always consistently seems to show bank two injector drops higher than bank one now i don't know if that has to do with the location of the high pressure fuel rail pressure sensor I believe it's on bank one but I could be wrong let's compare this test results to snap on let's try number one again yeah 191 so if we add these all together and then divide by eight we're going to be around 195 200 so 20% of 200 is 40, so it shouldn't differ by more than 40. But let's try it with the snap-on scan tool and see how that performs. So here's snap-on's version of the injector balance test. And they, they, they do it automated. Now it's possible that the GM software does it automated too. It says the ECM will pulse each injector once in consecutive order. When injector is tested, a slight dip in engine speed should be noticed. Fuel pressure drop results will be recorded for individual cylinders and displayed at the end of the test. It's also recommended to turn the AC off, although I think it might do that. Now, there's a glitch in this software. It only displays six cylinders here, but it does all eight. looks like it. I already did this test once and it looks like it's yeah it's testing number two now cylinder testing 
And now this results in PSI instead of kilopascals. So we have to do some conversion if you want to see the results. So it's testing cylinder three. So basically we're getting the same result. Cylinder four should be tested right now. Come on, you can do it. There it goes. And then cylinder five. I've already run through this test once. Now you can see the results on the right here are all the left bank cylinders, one, three, five, and seven, 22, 26, 25, 27, and all the right bank cylinders, 34, 33, 35, 33. I wonder if I could change this to read in uh, KPA instead, just so we get the same results. Testing number six now. Notice it doesn't show a seven and eight unless it's going to show it when it's testing it. But as I said, I, I condemned injectors based on this and also the fact that it was overfueling on the right bank on a previous truck. And then I've done this test on two other trucks with the Snap-on software. I didn't have a subscription to MDS2. or GM's GDS or whatever they call it. See, it doesn't show you that it's doing number seven and eight. But I'm gonna record these test results and then see if I can switch this into kilopascals. So I'm gonna change to kilopascals in the settings here. Uh, yes, except if you're looking for where that is, it's been down in this tab here. Go to Tools and Unit Setup. So it's in KPA. So let's try that test again and see if it shows it in KPA now. Yes, yeah, so now it's in KPA. And on the GM software, the left bank cylinders were between 175 and 190. So now it's doing, and the right bank cylinders were over 200. So we're getting basically the same results. I don't know why all of these tests are skewed. And it might have something to do with the location of the fuel rail pressure sensor. If I'm not mistaken, it's closer to the it's on the actual left fuel rail on the high pressure side. I don't, I don't recall if there was actually two of them. But maybe somebody from GM can pipe up and say, you know, how this test results are supposed to be uh, analyzed. And they've got the fuel rail in megapascals four megapascals. I didn't recall if that was in PSI before. Hmm. Well, I'm going to save this recording as well. So here is the fuel injector balance test instructions for the 5.3 L83 or L8B or 6.2 and so on. Um, it says there are two types of fuel injector tests procedures there's an active fuel injector tester or scan tool testing here it says the scan tool fuel injector balance test is performed while the engine is running at an idle the scan tool pressurizes the fuel rail to a predetermined pressure before each fuel injector is pulsed for a precise amount of time allowing a measured amount of fuel to be injected this causes a drop in the system fuel pressure that is recorded and used to compare each fuel injector well we kind of knew that but then you go down here with active fuel injector tester, no. And then it says with scan tool. So here it says 
Ignition on, command the fuel pump on with the scan tool, verify the fuel pressure. This is the old port fuel injector balance test. Verify the fuel pressure does not decrease greater than 34 kilopascals and 5 psi. Verify the scan tool fuel rail pressure sensor parameters between 1.9 and 5 megapascals. Well, this, okay. Select the fuel injector balance function with the control functions and scan tools. Select Q17 fuel injector. Repeat for each fuel, fuel injector. Obtain and record a pressure drop value for each fuel injector. All of the individual pressure values except for the fuel injector suspected of being faulty. This is the total pressure drop. Divide the total pressure drop by the number of fuel injectors that were added together. Okay. This is the average pressure drop. So add them all together. Divide by 8 if you're comparing all 8. Multiply the average pressure drop by 0.2. This is the acceptable variance, so 20%. Verify the difference between any individual pressure drop and the average pressure drop is not greater than the acceptable variance. Now let's do some math. I love math. So I've added all eight injectors up because this is a good running truck. I don't have any suspicious injectors. That's 1674 divided by eight equals 209. So the average pressure drop is 209 times 0.2 equals 41. So I shouldn't have a deviation of more than 41.85. 209 was the average, 41.85. So let's go back and see what they suggest. Uh, verify the difference between any individual pressure drop and the average pressure drop is not greater than the acceptable variance. So going back to my readings here, and let's go back to the diagnostic suite here. Oops. So from 209 to 183, let's see 153 on this one, so from 153 to 209, is definitely more than 41 kilopascal drops. So this injector theoretically fails. It's outside of the average. Two, that one's okay, that one's okay, that one's okay, that one's okay. So I'm not convinced that this test is that accurate, to be totally honest with you. And I didn't have GM software functional on a laptop until yesterday so I wanted to compare GM's test results so the bottom line is if you're using this test to condemn injectors or a bank of injectors my uh, recommendation is to take the results with a grain of salt I ended up putting a set of injectors into another truck now it did have a fuel imbalance fault code and it did correct that fault code uh, by changing the injectors and cleaning the intake valves but this test procedure is is not that accurate in my opinion take it for what it's worth that's just my opinion so here's the test results using GM software GDS number one shows 160 kilopascals so if I add all these together and then average that out, I come up with a 194. And then 10, 20% of that is 39. So this one is right on the verge of falling outside because from 160 to 195 is 35. That one's okay, that one's okay, that one's okay. They're all within 20% of the average, which is 195. This, this one is close, but according to the, and of course, if I do this test a couple of times, sometimes I get a different result. That's even worse, 145. 
but now you need to go through because the truck's been running, so temperature changes will affect the injector response, I'm sure. Look at number one, 145. That time was 160. So, difference of 35 kilopascals just by doing the injector test. Again, this test is not that accurate in my opinion. So, heaven help you if you're using this to condemn a set of injectors or a, an injector. And anybody has done injectors on one of these engines knows it's not a pleasant job. Thanks for watching.